the next speaker is uh, Dr. Leila Bastaki. Dr. Leila Bastaki, she is the director and consultant of Kuwait Medical uh, uh, Genetic Center. She had lots of contributions, and uh, the most important is the re-establishment of the neonatal screening program in Kuwait, uh, establishment and in charge of the metabolic genetic units in Kuwait uh, Genetic Medical Center providing all circumstances that guarantee its continuity, success, and progress, establishment of neuromuscular genetic registry in Kuwait. Actually, she has too many contributions, so you can uh, go through them. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Leila, for uh, the presence. She is going to talk to us about the newborn screening program in Kuwait. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim I'd like to thank Dr. Fahad and the organizing committee to give me this opportunity to speak about the newborn screening program in Kuwait, which is uh, expanded immensely in the last year. So uh, when we start the newborn screening, our vision was all babies have equal right to live healthy we need to create the platform for them. The mission was to prevent or reduce morbidity and mortality in newborn inside Kuwait. Uh, as we know that inborn error of metabolism is uh, range from, varies from one to 1,500 to one in 200,000. And in Kuwait, we expected that it will become much higher this is because of our personal experience. We have a large family size. There is a high rate of consanguineous marriage, so there is a high rate of autosomal recessive disorders, and it's somehow a genetic isolate. So in any newborn screening programs, there is some criteria must be fulfilled most these, the, to choose these disorders must be most common disorders. They are availability of treatment. There is facilities for diagnosis and treatment. It's difficult to recognize early, suitable screening test, and natural history is known. And cost effective to diagnose and treat these disorders. What, it was, uh, what is the scope of newborn screening? Of course, to screen all the newborns, then we track the infant with abnormal result and then prevent babies from death or disability. So to, we start this program and I think it was effective because there was a good relation between hospitals, newborn screening offices. And really I visited many, many of the newborn screening worldwide and I, don't, I didn't see these newborn screening offices. I think we in Kuwait, this is something very good that we do it, that there is a special office in each hospital. Then there must be a good newborn screening lab. There is coordinators, then endocrine and metabolic specialist. Uh, the program is supervised by Ministry of Health and administrated by Kuwait Medical Genetic Center. Now, all governments and most of the private hospitals are participating in this newborn screening program. Beside the test, uh, the program provides the medication and special formula as far as we can do. Still, there is some, it's not 100%, but it's improving. There is four, uh, four newborn screening offices in Kuwait, in Adan, Jahra, Farwaniya, and Sabah. The screen is screening the samples is collected, and then uh, 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 there is special cars to bring this specimen to Kuwait Medical Genetic Center. In Genetic Center, the test is done, and the unsatisfactory test result, there is confirmatory test after that, there is medical management and period, periodic outcome evaluation. We try to do education for healthcare professionals and parents and the uh, community and the last, uh, the last uh, 
uh, health, the, the last committee we, or community education we did it was last uh, month in, uh, uh, in the avenues and it wa I think it was successful. The, the, we have systemic quality assurance including program evaluation and validity of the test. Here we see that we have the newborn screening. Uh, we, we try to do it 48 hours after birth. But uh, there is some early discharge from the hospital, so we do two tests for them. One is before discharge, even it's after uh, for a 24 hour, and the second will be after one week. If the, the primary or the screening test is negative, so there is low risk of 22 disorders screened. If it's positive, we have a confirmatory test negative, so we exclude these children. If it's positive, we start treatment. The screening panel is 22 con condition, 18 detected by MS mass, uh, mass spectrometry, and these are some of the amino acid, some of the fatty acid, uh, and the, some of the organic acid. And then we have four detected by Delphia, uh, we will increase one more, and we are going to add the G6PD to this, uh, this, this panel, so it will be 23 conditions. Uh, a pilot project was started at 2005, and then really the, the program, we can, say the, the, we can say that it's the starting of the program in 2013, when there was a committee uh, named by the ministry, and really we start from that time a, a I think, a good program that it covers now 100% of the governmental hospital. These are the two, the Delphia, and uh, by 2005, we had only two disorders, phenylketonuria and congenital hypothyroidism. In 2012, we, we increased the Delphia test, and as we said, in 2014, uh, the actual uh, time was 2013, but uh, uh, we eman emerged the program by 2014. Uh, as example, this is one example of our report. We have here male born at term, his weight is 3.3. There is normal pregnancy and delivery. First child of non consanguineous parent. Newborn screening test result show these, uh, these results. So what now? We have to go to our, sorry. We have to go to our manual. There is a special manual in each uh, screening office that according to algorithm, this sample will repeat in duplicate. If still high, we will go to, uh, we will send the result to newborn screening offices. Then the, conf the confirmatory test will be done in Sabah Hospital. Here is the pre-analytic stage. Is, uh, here is start with the, the sample taking, the uh, car bringing the samples, then the analysis, and after that, the post-analysis will be in the newborn screening offices. We have quality control test, of course. We have internal standard with each sample from the Chrome system. Then we have another internal control with each patch with, from Chrome system. We are using external control every six months from CDC and repeating any positive result, result before reporting. Here, this is one, the last one we received at 2015. This is a, a certificate of participation in this program. Uh, by May 2015, we expanded the program to include also all the private hospitals in Kuwait. And really, after we including these hospitals, we have a good statistic because before that, we had all uh, the majority of the tests were done for the non-Kuwaiti population in Kuwait. And after including the private hospital, we had the real statistic for Kuwait, which uh, shows that uh, this is a, a, the first one here. The Kuwaiti was, were only 
5% and non kuwaiti 66.5. After May, when we include all the private hospitals, we have 49.2 Kuwaiti and 50.8 non kuwaiti So this is the actual uh, population of Kuwait. A uh, total number of samples screened in 2015 is 52,789. This is the number of filter paper we received. Of course, we received for the premature children uh, more than one filter paper. And sometime we receive a duplicate of filter paper for some, some, uh, some children also. So if we said that last year the number of uh, children were about uh, 40, 42,000 uh, live born, so we did almost most of them. Here is, uh, if we see here, the total number of filter papers, if you see that by, uh, by 2015, we received the highest uh, number because of the private hospital were included. Here each month, and here we say that by, we see by May increase in the number of filter of paper because of the same reason. Uh, here, according to the hospital, this is not, but here, the positive samples in relation to the to total uh, sample received. As we said, this is a screening. So we will screen and we will find some results. Some are uh, false positive, so, uh, but because of the screen, we will have a lot of false po positive, but when we compare it to a national uh, or international uh, offices, we found that our result is not so bad. Uh, here, these are samples in 2015. We have positive by screening was 1,595 1, and the confirmed were 114. So if we see here, this, these here the disorders, we'll see here for, for example, congenital hypothyroidism, we will found that there is 297, so 88% 80, 80, it's very high and we found only 31 confirmed. And this is because of the early uh, collection of the uh, specimen, so we'll give a high po false positive. We we'll found also that there is some that I want to show you here with tyrosinemia, and we are discussing that because we are, not, we are using the non derivative system, so tyrosinemia, tyrosinemia, tyrosinemia 1 really it's not uh, screened. So maybe we were remo removing it from our program as we are not doing the succinyl choline. So I think uh, it will not give us the, the actual result for the tyrosinemia 1. Here there is some common errors in sample shipping to the, to the center from um, some hospitals. And of course, the, 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 the job of the newborn screening office by improving the quality of this card we received because it's very important to receive a good quality of screening card rather than to repeat the card for these babies and this will um, uh, lo uh, lo sometime we, uh, we may lose a baby by not presenting a good quality of the filter paper. Victoria this Leila, is, five minutes. Yeah, this is here only, I will show you the false positive rate it's 2.8. The positive predictive value, if you see it here, it's 7.1, and the detection rate, or the false positive, 13 false positive to one true positive. This is very important. So we have it 13. If I show you some of the statistic from, for example, this is from Nebraska in 2010. They have 20 false positive to one true positive. And I am telling these programs are 40 years old or 30 years old, not as in our program. Here is another, uh, another one from, I think this is, I can't read it from here. 
It is from Minnesota. Yeah, it is here. They have the false positive rate is one in. It's not clear here. It was here. Mm. We have it one in thirteen. They have thirteen. Yeah, one in thirteen. They have it one in seventeen. Here. So I think we are uh, we are uh, walking on the right track. Of course, it's not 100% uh, work for the screening, but we, if we say that we started from two years, so I think what we are go doing is a, a promising job, as I, I can say. I really, I don't want to forget my colleagues Especially, first of all, Dr. Khalid Sehlawi, the Ministry of Health Under Secretary for his support, Dr. Muna El Khawari, she's the Director of Pediatric Council, and the members of the Newborn Screening Committee that without their help and their efforts, we couldn't reach this. Uh, and thank you very much for all of you. And sorry, I know it's late. It's the last uh, lecture, so I, I try to make it quick. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Elena. Uh, okay. Any question? Uh, thank you. Uh, I think you need to be congratulated. That's a fantastic piece of work, and I think, I think very impressive. Do you have a recommendation for your neonatal intensive care units? For example, we've just started uh, last year in Abu Dhabi doing day zero on our babies in case they get a transfusion and we can't sample them for some time and we do day zero day five and then repeat until the baby's on full feeds do you have something that you recommend for your extreme yeah i think we have in our program uh, that for uh, for the new the in, before doing any blood transfusion to collect a fl filter paper even if it's a very early even if he's a premature for premature babies, we follow the international guideline which uh, say to take three filter papers. First of all, the one that at birth and after that after two weeks and then after two weeks. So we have three filter papers for any newborn baby Great. in the intensive care. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Alayla, very much for the uh, presentation. Thanks.